Merchants of Doubt tells the story of a group of prominent physicists who tried to create doubt about the science behind a set of important environmental and health questions, starting with questions about the health of tobacco and leading up to the present day in discussions about the reality and significance of climate change. One of the key questions we tried to answer in the book was the question of motivation. Why would prominent distinguished scientists risk their scientific reputations, betray their own scientific colleagues to attack scientific evidence? And the answer most people would assume, most people would jump to the conclusion of thinking that they did this for money, that they sold out. But what we found in the documentary evidence really told a different story. It told a story of men who were motivated primarily by political ideology. And that was the ideology of the free market, of free market capitalism, the belief that uh, capitalism and freedom go hand in hand and that if you allow the government to control the marketplace, it will only be a matter of time before the government controls your personal life as well. So they tried to block regulation of tobacco or of air pollution because they feared that that regulation would be a kind of slippery slope to socialism. The strategy we call the tobacco strategy consists of raising doubt about the scientific evidence in order to persuade the public that policy action is unnecessary, not needed. It's perfidious because it builds on the strength of science and uses it as a weakness. So scientists try to be open and honest about the uncertainties in their data. Scientists will admit that nothing in science is ever proven absolutely. And so the tobacco strategy takes that honesty, that openness about uncertainty and questioning and makes it a weakness of science and says, well, if you, if you can't tell me that this is absolutely proven, then why should I stop smoking? So it's a strategy to block action by creating doubt. The people we studied were very prominent scientists who had risen to power and influence during the Cold War. They had worked on American weapons and rocketry programs, so they had access to power. They knew senators and congressmen, they knew the President of the United States, and they knew how to speak to the media. And so they used that, they used those contacts, that connection, those experiences to reach out to the media, to reach out to politicians, to get their message across. And they were very effective in doing that. There are new merchants of doubt cropping up every day. Three of the four main characters in our story are deceased now, but their place has been taken by new physicists who challenge the scientific evidence of climate change, as well as new merchants of doubt in other areas. So we've seen doubt mongering already cropping up related to the harms of overuse of antibiotics, uh, related to food labeling and GMOs. Uh, recently I saw some doubt mongering related to potential harms of cell phones. So one of the things that we hope that our readers will take away from the book is that they'll learn to recognize this strategy and when they see it, they'll say, oh, I know what that is. That's doubt mongering. <laughs>